Okay, let's get going here. I just turned on the recording. Let me double check because this kind of bitten me this week. I am got my sound on. So we are ready to look at the other piece of module one. Uh, the last time I was with you, which is more than a week ago, we were looking at TPAC. And I think I want to go back and just do a real simple, let's do a quick review of TPAC. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let these wonderful people who made this video do the talking because I'll wander off into all kinds of uh, extraneous stuff. So let's go ahead and just listen to this. You're a teacher ready to tap students into 21st century learning, but teaching with technology adds a whole new layer of knowledge and expertise. TPAC, or Technological Pedagogical Content Knowledge, is a framework that helps teachers consider how their knowledge domains intersect in order to effectively teach and engage students with technology. It's an approach that looks at the combination of what teachers know, how they teach, and the role of technology in order to better impact student learning. So, how does TPAC work? First, consider three domains, content knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and technological knowledge. Content knowledge, CK, is the what, your understanding and expertise of the subject area you teach, whether it's science, social studies, math, language arts, or all of the core curricular areas. CK is made up of all the facts, concepts, and theories of any given discipline. Pedagogical knowledge, PK, is the how, your expert knowledge of the art and science of teaching. From learning theories to instructional design, PK includes methods of teaching and assessment, like project-based learning, as well as instructional strategies like Think, Pair, Share. Knowledge of these principles helps you design successful learning experiences for each individual student. Pedagogical content knowledge, or PCK, is the intersection of the pedagogical and content areas. The knowledge you have of how to effectively engage students in learning concepts and skills. This knowledge includes approaches for addressing different learning styles and scaffolding content for deeper understanding. Educational psychologist Lee Shulman saw this intersection as teaching at its best. But several scholars, including Matthew Kohler and Punya Mishra, have added an additional component to 21st century teaching, technological knowledge, or TK. TK represents your knowledge about the tools, including how to select, use, and integrate technology into your curriculum. But it's not just about the devices. It's also the quality of content that students access through apps, websites, and games for learning. By integrating technology into PCK, you now have new insights into and opportunities for student learning. Technological content knowledge, or TCK, refers to how technology is used in a subject area for deep and lasting learning. For instance, to further their understanding of a topic, budding scientists can use sophisticated tools to collect evidence, make observations, and document findings. Interactive software then allows them to see their data represented in various ways. Application of such technologies can help deepen individual students' inquiry within a given discipline. Technological Pedagogical Knowledge, or TPK, is your understanding of how to choose and manage technology for your students. For instance, what technology will best ease your students' workflow throughout their exploration of the scientific method? How can you use collaboration tools to have students share their learning with each other? This knowledge about technology will advance your teaching. The intersection of all three knowledge domains, content, pedagogy, and technology, is the core of TPAC. This center area refers to your understanding of how tools can enhance your teaching and support student learning more deeply and effectively. For example, when learning about water pollution, students could explore 3D models of bacteria's cellular structure and then create their own animated images to analyze local water sources. They then could share their findings virtually with a prominent field expert. This dynamic interplay of all three components is TPAC, the heart of innovative teaching. You can use the TPAC framework to assess your own knowledge of content, pedagogy, and technology. Consider which areas you feel confident about and which areas you can improve upon. 
but also think about how you can collaborate with others at your school or in your professional learning communities to combine your strengths. For example, you could meet with your technology coordinator to brainstorm ways to redesign learning experiences. And knowing that each student, each teacher, and each classroom differs, the dotted line around the framework symbolizes the context that affects how TPAC is applied in a practical sense. TPAC takes into account that every classroom context is unique due to variations in professional development, school climate, and available resources. In conclusion, TPAC will help you remember to start with your content and pedagogy and then layer in technology. Sometimes we get excited about a new technology and then we design a lesson around that particular tool. But in doing so, it's easy to lose sight of goals and objectives for student learning. TPAC reminds us that technology is just part of great teaching. It's truly an intricate combination of content, pedagogy, and technology that make for innovative teaching and learning. So, what does your TPAC look like? I found this video about two years ago, and I tell you, it does, it's from Common Sense, which by the way is a really good site uh, that has lots and lots of good stuff. It's being used uh, in JCPS to teach kids about digital citizenship, especially in those schools that are getting one-to-one -one iPads. It's a good site. It's a good place. Well, let's make sure we got this. Let's wrap this up and put a bow on it. So TPAC is the interaction between content knowledge, the stuff you know, pedagogical knowledge, the stuff you know, how to teach your content, and then technology, the skills you have for integrating technology into the other two pieces. Notice what it says. Content knowledge must come first. If you don't know your content, all the cute tricks you have in your pocket on pedagogy and technology use isn't going to save the day. Pedagogy and content, the dance, as I call it, Schulman's dance, is the ability to slide in and out of different pedagogies depending upon what you're trying to do with the content. This is something I think people miss. They think the content pedagogy dance is all about we shouldn't use lecture. But in context, there are times when you must use the time that it takes to say to kids, here is new vocabulary that you need to understand. Now, the dance part comes in as we explore that new vocabulary we may try different ways of demonstrating understanding of that vocabulary, different pedagogies. We may break up into collaborative groups and ask kids to together to come up with definitions that reflect their understanding after we've given them the definition. In other words, what do you think this really means? So as you can see there, the dance of pedagogy and content, the dance, the slide, you know, pick your analogy is all about context. So if I'm introducing a topic, the way that I do that and the pedagogy I use that might look very differently than as we move more toward the demonstration phase of kids doing a applied understanding of their learning. So context. Now where's technology fit? Well, the takeaway from this is it's last. Now that doesn't mean it's it, that we're not looking at this in a hierarchical thing. We're looking at this through a planning lens. If you put technology first then try to make everything work around it, yeah, but it has such shallow meaning. And frankly, because we all know what happens when you use technology in your classroom, you better have a plan B in your back pocket because, you know, like it or not, it'll let us down. And so if you put all your eggs in that one technological, let's use this cool thing basket and that cool thing doesn't work. Well, <laughs> I've been there. So it should be the last phase and it should look something like, Let's use a tool, an online tool, that allows us to go in and demonstrate our understanding of what it is 
that we have been exploring through receiving content, exploring it through the different pedagogies, and now here's a tool that allows me to do demonstration. Conversely, you can have content exploring and using the technological tools to further help in the exploration. I think the FET simulations, the PHET, simulations that live out there where kids can have interactive simulations where they go in and change variables or um, put in different kinds of activities and then see what happens on the other side. Those are available, by the way, through four elementaries, and they are located in this class. We'll get to them. You look at those kinds of things, you have these different ways of technology use. Now, the one that you're grappling with in Jefferson County Public Schools right now is your digital backpack. And with that piece of technology, what we're looking at there is that's being delivered through the Google Classroom. And I was looking at that today. They were kind enough to send me over what it looks like. And so now the question becomes, well, all right, so the first thing I got to do is learn how to navigate my way through to my folder. And then the next thing I've got to do is what am I going to put in that folder? Is it going to be a document? Is it going to be a PowerPoint? Or if you're going to, if you're going to restrict kids to the use of, of Google products, okay, so let's go back and do that again. Is it going to be a Google Doc? Is it going to be a Google Slides? Is it going to be a Google Sheets, which is a spreadsheet? Is it going to be a Google Form? Is it going to be something like a Google We Video, where your kids go out and use the Chromebooks to actually make little videos? You know, in, in that scenario, the TPAC model jumps in very quickly. But what we have to be aware of is that Google Classroom is very much a tool, not a focus. And again, that's what TPAC is trying to get you to understand. Content, pedagogy, working together, the T piece being used to enhance that interaction of content and pedagogy or, or to be a way to do kids' demonstrations of under, understanding that are applied. Kind of like what you do in my class. So that was TPAC. And I hope that was not too fast for you. I think that um, that's a pretty straightforward explanation. Now, let's jump over here to the dancing robot. I don't know why I picked this, but there it is. So this is Tim. When we look at TPAC, you're looking at it through the lens of teacher use of technology. It's also a theoretical framework as opposed to a conceptual framework. And remember, we talked about this a little bit. So theoretical frameworks are designed for researchers to sit down in a room and look at what's going on in the room and measuring what teachers are doing and the success they're having with what they're using. And as you'll see here when we get to it, there's now a TPAC observation instrument that was designed by uh, Judy Harris. She's one of the leading lights in instructional technology. So that's what it is. Tim, on the other hand, you can look at Tim, and we're not going to watch this video. It's 11 minutes long, and I kind of find it boring. But I'm going to ask you to watch the video. What it does is it's looking at the different levels of technology integration and where it is occurring at these characteristics of a learning environment. Let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit. Yep, I can. So let's look at across the top here. Pretty straightforward. So the level of technology integration would be an entry level. The teacher begins to use technology tools to deliver curricular content to students. Uh, you see that a lot, don't you? I mean, you probably use it a lot. You've got a computer and you've got a projector in every class that I know of in Jefferson County. Uh, and a lot of you have smart boards. When we get to the adoption level, the teacher directs students in the con uh, conventional and productive use, excuse me, procedural use of technology tools. Again, if we are a Google Classroom school, 
then you are assigning things to kids to do to upload them into the Google Classroom site. That's adoption level. Adaption level. The teacher facilitates students in exploring and independently using technology tools. Now this is where we start, if we're looking at it through the TPAC model, this is where we start moving out of that kind of tool format and now we're going over into the creation format. We're allowing kids to use tools to create with. And if you've been with me on this journey for a while, you know there are tons of those tools out there that I've shown you over the years. The GoAnimate, the PictoChart that you're going to use for this particular class. Um, the one we're going to be using uh, in, a, in the next module coming up called Storyboard That. You know, there are tons and tons of tools out there that kids can use to create understandings. And let's not forget the tools that are readily available to kids, slides, PowerPoint, uh, and even docs, you know, because you can use a document and create something in it just as powerful as you can one of the crazy wild Web 2.0 products. So what we're doing here is we're moving kids into using tools. And then in the infusion level, the teacher provides the learning context and the students choose the technology tools to achieve the outcome. That's pretty cool. So if you say to kids, this is what we need to do. You need to create a artifact that demonstrates your understanding and you may pick the tool that you wish to use. Sounds simple. But in reality, they have to have lots of experiences with all the tools before you can just throw them in. And you know Steve's rule. Steve's rule says, if you can't explain a piece of technology, in other words, how to use it, to a group of kids in 15 minutes, I don't think it's really all that worthwhile. And I mean that. I don't care if you're sitting in a classroom that has kids identified as LD, or if you're sitting in a classroom of gifted and talented kids. I watched a young man last year in a middle school classroom, LD Math, and he was teaching kids how to use Desmos, which is an online graphing calculator. Within that 15-minute rule, he had shown them how to use the Desmos calculator, where the buttons were, what did they do, so on, so on. And he did it in such an engaging, interactive way, creative way, the kids were totally, they totally got it. So that when I came back to observe him again, he had moved on now to the, to the application of tool phase where they were learning slope. And he said, so now how to do this in Desmos? You click here, click here, click here. Put in your variables here, here, and then click for the uh, result. And they blew right into it. It took him only 15 minutes to demonstrate that. Good stuff. And then transformational level. The teacher encourages the use, the innovative use of technology tools. Technology tools are used to facilitate higher order learning activities that may not have been possible without the use of technology. This is where we see this rarely, but when we do see this, we see it mostly in PBL, project-based learning. Now, I can get on my soapbox and preach on about um, especially the way I'm hearing it being vocalized in JCPS, it's like project-based learning. And then everybody just stops. Well, actually, there's more than five meanings of project-based learning. And so whenever I'm around and that topic comes up, the simple question is, what are you talking about? And everybody goes, well, the kids are going to come up with, well, that's, that's one kind of project-based learning. Are we, you know, you get what I'm saying. But... When you see this, what you're basically seeing is, is kids are given a global sort of topic that they are then responsible for researching and then coming up with a uh, artifact that demonstrates their understanding that then can be displayed in a way that others can see it. There you go. That's sort of the PBL that I see in Jefferson County. Not that it's bad. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying 
that it kind of walks around the whole idea that there are multiple kinds. Now let's look down here at the characteristics of the learning environment. So as you can see across the top here, this is where we kind of land. In other words, what are we doing at the entry level and for active learning? Information is just passively received in an active learning environment at the entry level. You're just sitting there and I'm yakking at you like I'm doing right now. Collaborative learning. In the entry level, students are just using the tools. There's no collaboration, in other words. Constructivist learning. You know all about constructivism. You've heard my famous story about building the fish ponds and watching the fish die. And then I came up with a new theory of why my fish pond failed. And then I came up with another new theory why my fish pond, pond failed. And I came up with another new theory about why my fish pond failed. We are all constructivist. By the way, I finally figured it out. We are all constructivist learning learners. It is not a theory. It is reality, in my humble opinion. And in constructivist learning, what students are doing is they use technology tools to connect new information to their prior knowledge rather than passively receiving information. In other words, aha moments. Kids sit there, and because they have the technological tools to do research or to manipulate data, they have those aha moments about, oh, that's what you mean, or oh, I see how this fits with my previous thinking. Now, when you look over here at the entry level, the information is delivered to the kids. And then when you look at constructive adoption, guided conventional use for knowledge building, and then when you look at constructive adaptation, you're more allowing the kids to use their epistemic agency to go in and say, well, this is what I know and this is what I don't know. And it's the don't knows then that drives the thinking. It's really, really hard in this day and age of did you get it right on the test to move kids into this, into this realm. Kids have been so trained now to just be um, concerned about, did I get the right answer? Did I give you the right answer? That then they're putting that into their constructivist learning, called a toolkit, doesn't really happen. And that's why we have so much trouble with when we go from grade two to grade three or grade five to grade six, you know, and everybody says, well, the teachers didn't teach that back then. Actually, they did teach it. It's just that the way we teach is it doesn't gain traction in kids, and so it doesn't stick. It's as simple as that. Authentic learning. This is also one that's hard to do. Uh, students use technology tools to link learning activities to the world beyond the instructional setting rather than working on being contextualized assignments. Um, let's go back to that guy with the Desmos calculators. So here he had these kids understanding how to use the Desmos calculator. He had them go through the steps of using the calculators to determine slope. You remember slope, rise over run. Um, middle school, classic middle school math. Perfect stuff. Did a great job. What took him out of the realm of doing a great job to an exemplary job was he then walked back into the class and said to them, okay, let's measure and actually apply this to see if we have got it. So what he did is he took them through an architectural exercise that says when you are designing a, a slope, when you're designing steps or a ramp, for people to enter a building that needs to have wheelchair access, here are the real world parameters for that. Let's go measure some things and see if our school meets those parameters. Bingo. Now, when you watch that, what was fun to watch was <laughs> they, they, they kind of struggled over measuring it. And I just kind of sat there and looked at it and I went, oh, really? You're having that much trouble knowing how to work a tape measure. Does that surprise you? Because we don't let kids use tools anymore. 
And so when they went and understood what they were seeing when they were using their tape measure, and they brought that back and put it into the decimals calculator, they could get their slope and nothing flat, obviously. And so then they were able to go back and look at, well, the parameter is this. Our findings is this. Whoops. Really interesting stuff. And then goal-directed learning. Again, something we don't see very much of. Students use technology tools to set goals, plan activities, monitor progress, and evaluate results rather than simply completing assignments. That should be a big red circle around it, and then underneath it in bold letters, digital backpack. That's what your digital backpack is looking for, right there. And when we look over here at the goal-directed entry, directions given step-by-test step task monitoring, kind of like what I do when I show you how to use various tools. And goal-directed adoption, conventional procedure use of tools to plan or monitor. And then goal-directed adaptation, purposeful use of tools to plan and monitor, some student's choice and exploration. And it's flexible and seamless use of tools to plan and monitor the goal directed. That's Tim. When we look at what Tim, if you want to, you know, compare and contrast, when we look at what Tim states that it is, it says that it's a common language for technology integration and professional development. So the Tim can be used for teacher self-evaluation. Now, frankly, I find the Lodi levels of technology integration, I find that to be a much more robust and I don't know if safer is the right word. In other words, if I were a teacher and I were taking a Lodi, I wouldn't feel as intimidated taking a Lodi as I do if I were taking this. And I, I feel like the way that the Lodi is structured, it's a much safer um, for a teacher because, first of all, it's anonymous. And then second of all, it's broken down into much more uh, approachable concepts than this is. You know, this is kind of like, what do you mean? Whereas a Lodi is pretty straightforward. I know how to use word processing. You know, it, it's much more task oriented than this is. And as you can see, it has five attributes of learning environments. Are they active, collaborative, constructive, authentic, and goal-directed? And then we have the different levels of technology integration, the entry, adaption, adoption, and fusion, and transformation. So what are we looking at it for? We are looking at it in terms of if I walked into a classroom and I sat down and I watched kids using technology. How would I fill out the TIM? If I walked into a classroom and looked at the TPAC observation instrument, what I'm looking there is I'm looking at teacher behaviors. I'm looking to see, is there a teacher behavior that demonstrates they have a good, solid content knowledge understanding? Do they employ multiple pedagogies or is the pedagogy within a contextual view? In other words, this is brand new. I got to teach the kids. I got to talk to them. That's one way of looking at pedagogical and content knowledge and the two working with each other. Um, good teaching, what we should see is you move quickly from that one pedagogy into another pedagogy that allows for better understanding. That's what Shulman writes about in his book. Now, the technology piece comes in, and we should see it coming in, not first. Today, we're going to use this to do that, and it's going to be cool. We're not one of looking for that, unless it's a technology class, where, of course, we got to introduce kids to the various tools. But if I were looking at a science class, fifth grade, and I walked in and the teacher gets up and she or he says, we're going to use this today. And it's located out here, blah, 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 blah. And we're going to be using it to figure out blah, blah, blah. 
I'm backing up a little bit and I'm going, so what was the content? What is, what are we using it? Okay. Tim, I'm looking at kids. So where do you fall, kid, in the active learning? In other words, what is it that you're doing with this lesson? With technology. Hello. Okay. Remember, that's what you're looking for here. So the Tim is looking for technology first. Whereas the TPAC, I'm looking at C, the CK, and the PK in its interactions with the TK coming in. With the TIM, I'm looking at students. With the TPAC, I'm looking at teachers. And so when I look at the TIM, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at for the kids. I'm saying, are you actively learning? How? Going to cross over this way. Is there any collaborative learning going on? What about constructivist learning? Is there any of that going on? And then I'm going to analyze and identify where I see it falling. Now that's all to set you up for the assessment. So let me go back and let's look at the assessment. I had somebody, uh, and this is not a pejorative, by the way, comment. But I did have somebody write me not too long ago, and they were saying, gosh, Steve, uh, there's an awful lot to do in each one of these modules. Well, when I saw that, I kind of chuckled to myself because it, we should be finished right around the 1st of November. Be even earlier, depending upon if you're self-motivated and you kind of the kind of person who just goes in and gets things done on their own. So I'm not feeling any kind of regrets about asking you to do a little bit more because I think what we're trying to do here is we're trying to simplify down this idea about integration of technology into curriculum. Um, and remember, your final does not have to be necessarily used with kids. It's just basically an outline that you're going to demonstrate your understanding of the UBD model, the understanding by design model. The other thing I want to point out is when we jump over here into the um, PBWorks uh, wiki site that we have created, it has in its title another uh, curricular design model called um, Universal Design for Learning. Um, and I'm, we're not going to necessarily worry about that for this, this assignment. In this assignment, what we're going to be looking at is here are the two instruments. So if you look at this, this is the one for TPAC. And as you can see, it goes through technological goals and curriculum, instructional strategies and technologies, technology selection, and fit. And then it looks at instructional use and technology logistics. When you look at it, and you go across, it uses just, you know, four, three, two, one, kind of a Danielson thing going on here. And what it says then are for technology used in the lesson are strongly aligned with one or more curricular goals. That's the top of the line. And then when you look at the bottom, it's technology used in the lessons are not aligned. And so this one is something we're pretty comfortable with. We've, we've seen this. If you've gone through Cape Tip, you've lived this one. Um, you know, and, and if you think about it, when you look at the threes, technology used in this lesson are aligned with one or more curricular goals. You know, you can tell that uh, the three, again, just like in the Danielson model, this is developing, you're doing good. But remember, there's two pieces to it, the instructional use uh, down here and then the technology of logistics. In other words, is the teacher proficient in the technology use in the classroom? Is there a lot of fumbles? If there is, is there a lot of, hold on a minute while I get that website back up? You know, we've all been there. <laughs> we've all been there. Then when you drop down here to the TIM, again, the TIM is looking for student use. So what are we doing? Let's jump back up. The first thing I want you to do is to climb to the top of Bloom's Taxonomy's Ladder. And I want you to go in and use a tool called the Picture Chart. And what the picture chart is, 
is a tool for you to make something called an infographic. You've been with me before. You know what we're getting ready to do. And I'm going to log in to the Pictochart. And I'm going to be using Steve's login because that way I get to everything in the Pictochart. Now, if you want to log in with your own login, in other words, create your own account, fine, no problem. If you want to use Steve's login for your class, in other words, letting your kids use it, feel free. I'm not giving away my bank account information or anything interesting here. This is pretty much a standard login I use for all the technology tools that I allow you to use freely. Um, because if you try to use, if you try to get a pick to chart account, that's a paid account. It's not exactly cheap. So the login is sbswan02 at louisville.edu with a password. And I can't show you the password. It is all lowercase U L I T two four one. I'll do it again. The password is all lowercase U L I T two four one. And then I'm going to pop in. Multiple people can be signed in at the same time, which is kind of nice. And as you can see, uh, folks have been creating folders in here to use with their kids, which is kind of cool. And you are more than welcome to do the same thing. More than welcome to do that. And if you want to do it, and just drop me a text at 502-457-2937. I'll walk you through how to do it. If you look over here, this is where the various tools are. And by the way, you can use more than the infographic if you want to. Presentations are kind of cool. And then the printable ones allow you to create things that you can print out to make gallery walks with. I've had plenty of teachers do that. Um, in other words, it knows how to put it all together. So when it prints it out, it doesn't go over 14 pages or something like that. Uh, I've had lots of teachers do, do that one and use it for gallery walks in their classroom. We're going to make an infographic. So I'm going to click on infographic. And when I do that, what it does is it gives me free templates, pro templates, team templates. Well, you're not going to be doing a team template. So you're basically working with pro templates or if you are the kind of person who wants to just start everything on your own, there's your plus that gives you the blank. So what is it he's asking you to do? He wants you to build an infographic using picture chart that depicts the weaving together of TPAC and Tim to form a picture of their interconnections and relationship to teaching using technology authentically. So what I'm asking you to do is to think about everything that I've just presented to you. Also the things that are sitting there. In other words, watch the, if you need to watch the video again from the TPAC, I would strongly urge you to watch that one video. You really don't need any more than that. And then the Tim presentation is also very good. I just find it a little long. And then I'm asking you to think about how those go together in integration of technology. So if I jump in here, and I say, well, let's first of all, let's look around. What kind of template do I want to use? So I'm, I'm going to go look at the pro templates. And I'm going to look at what I'm looking for here is, am I looking for something that maybe does a compare and contrast? Am I looking for something that allows me to put lots of graphics in? Uh, in other words, what jumps out at me to help me, that helps me formulate in my mind what it is I'm trying to do with this idea that Steve has given me. Um, you might be the kind of person who's a very straightforward, what's step one, step two, step three, step four. So you might be looking for something like that. You might be looking for the kind of things that are, that are kind of, um, here's a list connected to another list. Here we go. This is what I was just looking for. Right down here. And so if I go into here and I say, I'm going to use this template because I look like the look. 
I'm not necessarily looking for it to fill in the blanks for me here. I'm just looking for the looks. And so as you can see, what it does is it starts giving me a nice group of graphics. And it's already taken care of putting things into um, nice text boxes. Now, once I start playing around inside the text box, it's PowerPoint. At this point, it's PowerPoint. And so I can go in and I can start typing. That's how I want to do it. I can come up here, and I don't know what that little box is right there, but it looks like it's its own little box. Let's see. Oh, well, I accidentally blew it off. No harm, no foul. Control Z brings it right back. I don't know how to get rid of the or there. I'm sure it's a it's another text that I can do. What I can do with the text that I have is I can go back in here, and I can highlight it, and then I can come up here under. I can change the font. I definitely can change the size. And when I change the size, as you can see, because you can see it's doing it, I can see what it looks like. And I can go back and I can fix it. I can do anything I want to it because it's text. And I can fix the box by making it bigger. I can stretch it out. I can move it around. If I want, I can give it a tilt. You know, however you want to play with it. Then, down here where this graphic is, again, there's this nice box that somebody's already made for me to start writing in. And if I don't like the graphic that goes with it, well, I can just click on the graphic behind it and I can get rid of it. I can get rid of it, but I keep the box. I keep my text box. So I can come back over here and I can look for graphics. And I might want to do, hmm, let's see. How about if I drop in here and I do a search in Pictochart and say uh, computer. Let's see what it comes up with. And so I have all these different looks. And I might drag one of these over and put it in here. And now uh, I have the ability. Oh, I want to move that to the. Put that behind. And so I do that up here. Or I can make it opaque. Either way. Or I can come in here and I can do this one. And I can make it come to the fro. Either way. You know, it's yours to play with. That's the point here. And so we have all this ability now to play within here using the tools that it gives us. Now, I might just say, you know what, I'm just going to slide that over because I want my list here to be, I don't want it to be covered up or I don't want it covering up the graphic because it gets in the way. And now I have, I can start writing in here. I could go down here and I can come in and I can make these. I could have this visual point one. I could change that over to one of the TPAC uh, looks. In other words, pedagogical knowledge. How is it in relationship to what we see in the TIM? Let's think about that for a second. So if I think about the pedagogical knowledge, where does it fit in relationship to TIM? Is it something that we would see in the learning environment? In other words, do you know what it, where it fits within the learning environment? How do you see it fitting within 
the environment where you're actually teaching things. So, hint, hint, if you go to the uploads here, there are all kinds of pictures that people who have been before you have put into this thing. So you might want to go poking around in here to look for pictures. And as you can see, uh, the problem, <laughs> the glorious problem that we have here is schools are using this like crazy. And so you see things in here that are related to specific, you know, things that schools are doing. Uh, that was why you saw all that prohibition stuff. And here's a bunch that has to do, it looks like it's weather. Ah, here we go. There's Samer. There's a microscope. I don't know what that's all about. But you get There's lots and lots of good stuff in here. Okay. Thanks. Got it. That's a picture chart. Um, I think once you go into it and play around with it, I tell you the key to doing this right is to make sure that you find a theme or if the themes just drive you crazy and, and it does. Some people just don't like the use of them. What I would do is I would go in and start from scratch and just hit that plus sign there when you go into the infographics. Now, things to show you. Make sure up here where it says new pick the chart that you go in there and you put your title in here. Make sure you do that. And then when you come over here, make sure you save it. Okay. Make sure you give it a title. Make sure you save it. If you sit here and do all this great work and then you quit, because you see up there where it says you, you look as you're working, you go, oh, it's saving my work. Yeah, it's saving your work, but it's saving your work as untitled pick the chart. Could we find it? Eventually. But if you just take the time and give it a title, it could be something as simple as that. Your name, Pack and Tim. When you're ready, you're going to come over here to share. Make sure you have the share. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm ready. Only I can view the sharing link. Please change that to anyone can view the sharing link. Thank you very much. And then you can open this on the web. As you can see, there's my little thing. There's your link. So the link is at the top of the page when you go to open it. So be careful there. If you go back in here, whoops, if you go back into where you actually had it and you try to use, let's see, there we go. You can grab this here, but it's a pain in the butt to do. Okay, it's a pain in the butt to do. What you really need to do is just go here, open it on the web, copy the URL, and it says here that all I want you to do is to put that over into the live tech. I'll show you. I'm going to show you that right now, how to do that. Now, let's go and look at how we're going to do. Well, I'm just going to show you how to do that. So over here in the live text, I've already had folks writing me about we only see there's only two things in the live text. You're absolutely correct. What you're doing here is each one of these projects that we're doing has their own little place in the live text. So what we're going to be doing is when you come into this, you're going to be basically right here where it says build infographic, blah, blah, blah. 
just put your text link right there. Okay. Now, when we get to the other piece, which is where we go to this, which is located in a PB works, we are looking at the videos that are located here and it says technology in the classroom videos. So I got to this by clicking here in the module. I get to where the videos are for the TPAC and the TIM evaluation by clicking here and it takes me here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. We got a lot. These are videos that demonstrate the use of technology in classrooms. Now, when I say that, let me add, these are videos that demonstrate the use of technology in classroom, the good, the bad, the ugly. A negative is just as powerful as a positive. So if you find something in here that you watch and you think, good gracious, this is really a good demonstration of how badly technology can be used. Or if you want to use it as a way of, of showing in the Tim that everything is just entry level. That's just as good as trying to find the one that is at the top of the charts. You know, if you're thinking about the Tim that it's, um, or, I mean, the TPAC, it's a four across, you know, all, which you won't find, by the way. Um, you are welcome to go either way with it. So let's see here. If I were to go in and I want to use this video, and what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to watch them, I will warn you um, that some of these, as you can see, some of these are KTIP videos, Cycle 3 Math Lesson Part 1. And so the reason why I did these is I really wanted to have some real authentic videos. Um, things that say video clips, frankly, they were um, borrowed. They're open, by the way. They're under um, Creative Commons licensing. They are from the Lodi, the Levels of Technology Integration. They are from the Lodi training uh, that I have. So, you know, are, they're going to be a little more focused. So if you drop down here, let's look at this one right here. We saw a graph in our social studies book. There was a lot of graph. And when I asked the students uh, if they could read the graph, several of them had a lot of trouble reading it because of the lines. They were in between numbers. They weren't sure what those numbers meant. I had the students create their own graphs using the exact same values for the exact same time frame uh, in a format that was uh, more meaningful for them. We, uh, we recreated the line graph again. We created... Okay. Watching that one, if you think that's a good example of technology integration... In the TPAC model, this is what I'm asking you to do. Come down here where it says YouTube. Click on that. It will take you to that video we sitting in the YouTube. Uh, tell us you don't need <laughs> you don't need notifications. Thank you very much, YouTube. Come up here and see that URL for that video. Now, if you're Vertical and other bar graphs. If you're the kind of person who says, okay, Steve, I don't like jumping through all those hoopy hoops. Okay, fine. Come back here and if you right click on it, it'll do the same thing. You can just copy the video URL. So either way. So I'm going to copy the video URL and I'm going to now go over to where I am in here. And what I'm going to do. And you know what? I need to get to where that I can actually work in here. Because right now, I'm seeing it as you probably see it as a student. So let me get to where I can see it and work within it. This doesn't look anything like what you work with, by the way. And I apologize for that. 
drives me crazy that uh, I can't show you what you see when you do it. But you know where I'm going here. I'm basically going to get to my pencil. And I'm going to be able to edit this. And so when I come into here, where Steve has placed the Earl of your video here, I'm going to ask you to look for the little YouTube icon that's right up here in the menu bar. When I click on that, it says, paste your YouTube video here. And when I do that, it actually puts the clip in. Now, what I'm asking you to do is to watch that video clip and down here in the, the TPAC model observation, you are going to be identifying how you see those demonstrated in that video. So if I see that that technology used in the lesson are strongly aligned with one more curricular goals, I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to bold it. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to look at technology use optimally supports instructional strategies. Uh, yeah, I think it does. So I'm going to highlight whoops. I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to bold it. You with me? And then I'm going to keep going down through here and deciding where in this video I see it land in the TPAC observation instrument. And I'm going to indicate that by highlighting and bolding the places where I think it lands. Now, when I get to Tim, notice I'm giving you the option here of putting in a different video. If you think your video can meet both the requirements of looking at it through the lens of how is the teacher using the technology in this classroom? How are the kids using the technology in the classroom? You go right ahead. I don't think, yeah, I'll take that back. There are plenty of uses in here that could be both. So if we go back now, we've put the same clip in with the guy and kids creating graphs because they didn't understand the graphs, graphs when they in saw them in their social book. studies textbook. Thank you, sir. I'm going to come down here and now I'm going to look at through the Tim. I would say that in the Tim under technology, I would give this guy a two. So he's basically saying uh, the teacher directs students in a conventional use of tool-based software. When I look down here and I see it, I go, hmm, to begin to utilize technology tools to create products and WordPress. So I'm going to give him that one. And I'll highlight it. Give it a bold it down. Okay. I'm trying to here. Yeah, it worked. Make it sure that it's just doing one box instead of multiple boxes within the uh, grid. So that's what you're doing for the TPAC observation instrument and the TIM. Let's review. I would like for you to find one or two videos. And I've already hinted at you that it's going to be hard to find one that can do both. I also let you know, like let's watch a little bit of this one. All right, friends. So your job is to be an investigator. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to be pulling some shapes out of my mystery bag. And I'm going to have two. Now, i tell you why I picked this one. Because you're going to look at it and you're going to say, I don't see a computer. Uh, no, no, I, I don't see a computer use here. Do you see technology use in the shapes? Sure. 
you know, a technology doesn't have to be a computer. Now we jump over here to this one. Okay, so today we're going to talk about statistical questions. So we're going to watch a little video. Um, I'm going to ask you some questions afterward. I have candy. So be ready to answer some questions about the video. Um, this is not the same video you watched yesterday. It's a different one. So pay attention, and we'll talk about it at the end. Okay, so let's go see what they're doing. So these are kids using okay. whiteboards. All right, show them. Start with I'm going to jump ahead again. Okay, so you see what I'm showing you here. You've got to, and feel free to kind of jump around inside of these. Now, I'll give you a hint. The uh, video clips are shorter <laughs> than the ones that are the K-tips. Surprise, surprise. Uh, and I did throw a couple of them in here. Let me let you see this one. Now I'll tell you why I put these kinds of in, uh, these kinds of videos in here. There's another one in here. Ah, um, I always laugh at this one because this is the guy that'll eventually leave the classroom to become a principal somewhere. You can tell by the tie and on the fact that he's got himself in the news. A first grade teacher in Canada is trying to set an example about the benefits of using new technology in the classroom. His students use iPads, iPods, and laptops for educational purposes on a daily basis. Ted Fioraliso got to see the students in action today and joins us from our Finger Lakes Bureau in Canada. With Ted. Well, Rich, I could tell you these six and seven year olds probably know how to use an iPad better, better than I do. Okay, let's all pause now and go chuckling to ourselves. <laughs> the kids can use iPads better than he can. Uh, ignore all that and then get into the actual meat here and see if Mr. Principal uh, Wannabe. The other group is going to be using the iPad. Welcome to first grade. Yeah, I'm probably doing it on the iPad. It's something that the kids really enjoy, and they're able to have. So my question is, yeah, the kids really enjoy. Is this the example of the technology coming first and then trying to figure out what to do with it? Just saying. If it is, and you want to use this one, as an example of a poor example, make sure you say that in your instrument uh, ratings. Okay. So what we've done for module one is let's read. We have looked at both the TPAC and the TIM. We've talked about the TPAC being a theoretical model that is used primarily in research, to look at how teachers integrate the use of content, pedagogy, and technology. We have looked at it with an understanding of the P and the C that was defined by Shulman in his seminal work, um, where he basically said good teachers understand their content well enough to understand Different pedagogy fits different ways in content based upon context. When I'm teaching something for the first time, I need to have a, a place where I explain to kids vocabulary words and their meanings. Or this is how a linear equation is solved. But I don't stop there. I give them a different pedagogy where they explore, they play with it, they can see how it fits into their thinking, which is always what we're trying to do, is to get kids to think about what their new learning is and how it fits with prior learning. That's PCK. Now, the TPCK comes in when we say, here are the technological tools that we have available, and how now do they fit? 
Frankly, most of the time when you see this particular aspect of TPAC, it's usually because the teacher has a projector and a computer, and that's where it stops, where it begins and where it ends. Or they may have a smart board in the classroom. And by the way, there's a smart board based video in here if you want to take a look at that one. So when we look at those, what we're looking for is are kids involved in the use of the technology that is then based upon a pedagogical and content reason. Now when we get to Tim, what Tim is looking at is where does the technology and kids use of the technology. How does it, what does that look like? And so that example I just gave, that would be very much entry level. You know, kids are basically just passively looking at the computer being projected on a screen. They might have an interaction with it if the teacher asks them to come and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What we're looking for when you go to design that unit that you're going to be looking at is we're going to be challenging you to look for the pieces that will be available that would take you to that higher level in both TPAC and TIM. Okie doke. So there's our TPAC observation instrument. Here's our TIM observation observation instrument. I'm asking you to create a pictograph, pick the chart, excuse me, that utilizes an infographic that helps us understand your understanding of the two and how they weave together and how they stand apart from each other. How much do I have to put into it, Steve? as much as it takes for me to see that you have an understanding. If you want to do a compare and contrast, if you want to do just a listing of the different pieces that exist in them, and then put a box at the bottom where you synthesize and give me your understanding. Over here in the live text, I've shown you how to actually take the videos that are, that exist in the PB Works wiki and put them in here. Pretty simple actually. Live text, way to go. And then up here, all you need to do is for your picture chart is again to just basically copy out the URL of your picture chart, which you get from here. and place that into the live text. Uh, those of you who have worked with live text before and URLs know that live text doesn't understand URLs natively. It doesn't understand a web address natively. So when you put it into your live text assignment, it's just going to come in as text. It doesn't understand that it's a link. It doesn't understand to highlight it in blue, underline it in blue and all that. Um, don't worry about that. Because what I do is I come in and I just highlight it and right click, open this in a new tab, and it takes me right to where your picture chart, your infographic will live. Things to remember about the picture chart make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure that you give it a name uh, because it's going to save it. It'll do that for you, but it's going to save it as untitled. Make sure you give it a name and you do that right up there at the top. Yeah, let me make sure. show you again. So when I use this Tim and I go in and start working within the template, I want to make sure where it says untitled infographic up here, go in there and change that. Put your name into that and then do a save. And then go in here and start working away with dating your infographic. Okay? Make sure you do that. Because when it you go to save it, it'll save it with your name. Otherwise, it's going to save it as untitled infographic. Okay. That's what I have for this evening.
Now, let me jump back over here. Let me closing out windows up here. And let's go see who all is here with me tonight. Oh, it's just Kim. Just Kim. Um, if you have any questions for me now, jump in there. Okay. Do you think I did it, Kim, where it's pretty straightforward what he's asking us to do, asking you to do? Okay. I always appreciate you, Kim. So I'm going to, um, oh, hi, Gary. I didn't know we had more than one. Oh, we have five people in the room. Let's go look at who's all with us tonight. Gary's here, Kim's here, Madeline's here, and Rachel's here. Good. So all of you that are here, do you feel like you have an understanding of what Steve is asking you to do here? Just give me a quick little, yes, I got it, Steve. I think you want to talk to me. Either way. Okay. Uh, I want to give you one last thing before I click out. What I'm doing with these videos that we create uh, with the Collaborate Ultra, um, and you can see that here, I am actually downloading those videos and then uploading them into a YouTube channel, and then I'm putting them here. So if you don't have to come in now and go to the Collaborate Ultra, the video that we are now creating right now at this moment, it will be in your module um, that you can watch again if you need to go back and make sure um, if you miss something. I think we've done a good job of covering module two, or module one, Next week, when we do module two, frankly, that is the lift. That is the core of the course, the understanding by design. I will probably take a couple of weeks doing it because I really want you to get this. And we do have quite a tool here that we'll probably need to take some time understanding how it works. Um, this is one of my, uh, this is a new tool. You've never seen this one before from me, uh, but I'm going to stress to you that I now have a, an account with this storyboard that, and again, just like the Picta chart, just like the GoAnimate, if you want to use this with your kids, you are more than welcome to use that. So I look forward to showing you all this starting next week. We will be doing quite the exploration of the understanding by design. I hope the other thing that you've noticed tonight is I have kind of solved the problem of watching videos in synchronous time, in other words, allowing you and I to sit together and see the video together. I think we have that under control. It's not perfect, but it certainly is a lot better than what it used to be. And we'll be doing a, that a lot with Understanding by Design. I want you to hear it from the horse's mouth, what they were thinking was with Understanding by design. Look forward to being with you next Wednesday. As always, you have questions, text me at 502-457-2937. When you text me questions, you get a either an immediate or almost immediate response. Look forward to being with you next Wednesday.